Hey guys, how you doing? Hope everyone is doing good. So if this is the first time you're watching my videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Please drop a like, leave a comment if you like this type of content. I'll be producing more videos, uh, giving some tips and sharing some ideas and techniques on uh, mixing, vocal production, vocal mixing, audio in general, mastering, a lot of cool things. So also if you have some suggestions, just leave the suggestions here on the comments. I'll be checking and preparing more videos soon. Okay, so I decided to prepare this video because this is a, a, a subject that I get a lot of questions all the time. And sometimes people just get confused on how to use properly a de -esser. So basically, de -esser is a beautiful name for uh, a very specific type of compressor, or a very specific um, preset of a compressor. Uh, basically, what a de -esser does, uh, it helps you to tame, to control a little bit the sibilance of a vocal. So basically, like in, in technical terms, what we're doing, we're just grabbing a compressor and we are modifying the side chain of this compressor. So we're just uh, telling to the compressor to pay attention most of the time to the high frequencies where the sibilance, like the, the S sound, the T, the SH kind of sound, uh, they happen on the spectrum. So by modifying the side chain of a regular compressor, we can, you know, just focus a little more on the sibilance and then we can reduce them, just making the vocals smoother, especially uh, when we start opening up the sound, just making like brighter and sharper. Uh, and then we have to do this kind of uh, control, otherwise the vocals just get all over the place. So it's, it's very important actually for a vocal production, especially uh, nowadays, like for, you know, pop music, hip hop, where usually uh, you're trying to bring the vocals like more upfront, like very, you know, bright and more present. So you need to take care of the sibilance, otherwise everything gets crazy. So let me show you a couple of things like how uh, we would utilize properly a de -esser. I'll show you, you know, a couple uh, different tips for you. But let me just play a little bit of the song that we have here. It's a song called Heart Eater by the artist uh, Shay J. Pretty cool artist. Um, yeah, let me just play a little bit so you can get an idea. Pretty cool song. Um, yeah, so let me show you a little bit uh, what I did in here. Let me just solo the vocal for a bit so I can get an idea. I am not the one, I only barely got away. But it's far too late for you, for you, you. Okay, cool. So usually, the de -esser that I like to use, and I use this one 100% uh, of the time. First of all, because it does uh, what a de -esser is supposed to do pretty well. It's pretty easy to use, pretty clear, pretty transparent, which is the Waves de -esser. Uh The Waves actually has another one 
which is the Renaissance Deasser, which is pretty cool as well. But for some reason, simply got used to this one. It has everything that we need for a Deasser. So pretty straightforward. Uh, for a regular Deasser, we need to uh, tweak basically three main parameters. So the most important one is the threshold. So the threshold just says that everything that goes above it uh, is going to be compressed. So when I play the vocal here and we simply observe what's happening uh, inside the deasser. I am not the one, I only barely got away. But it's far too late for you. So the signal is actually uh, all the time below the threshold until it reaches uh, the siblings, like the S sound, the T sound. So when I play on this part right here, but it's, far too late. it's actually lagging a little bit just because we have like a plugin, uh, like a, a, a delay on the plugins. So visually speaking, like the, the visuals are slightly delayed compared to the sound. But every time that we reach like the S sound or the T sound or the SH sound, the deasser, uh, I mean, the signal itself goes above the threshold and is actually ducked by the deasser. So, how does a deasser work? So, to set up a deasser, the first thing that you have to do, and this is the most important thing that you have to do, and I'm going to share with you uh, my mindset, the way that I used to set it up, because for me, it's pretty simple. The first thing that you have to set is uh, what you are actually telling the deasser to pay attention to. So you have to say first what. Um, so for every single deasser, you have the frequency, which is actually the cutoff frequency. From that frequency on, on the spread, like from that frequency and above, uh, the deasser is going to pay more attention to the signal. So that's the concept. So let's say that I have uh, the frequency uh, here set up at 6.9K or 6,900 uh, Hertz. So everything above this frequency is going to be uh, more sensitive to the compression. Okay, and this only happens if I have the side chain selected as a high pass filter. So that's the first thing that people get very confused about. So the way I like to work, I like to select a range from a certain frequency and on because that makes the entire work much easier for the deasser. So the way I do it, uh, just for you to practice while you're still uh, trying to learn how to use a deasser, the way I do, and Basically, that's the same thing for all the deassers. You have the monitor uh, control here. So you have the audio, which is the, the sound, like the process sound itself. And you have uh, a way of monitoring the side chain, which is just the audio that the deasser is paying attention, is paying more attention to, okay? So if you click here on side chain, you're actually just hearing a filtered sound. So the way I do, and that's pretty easy, you click on the side chain so you can actually just hear uh, the information that the compressor is using to trigger the compression, um, put on side chain, and then you move the frequency up and down until the point that you isolate more, it, you make more clear for the compressor. You just tell the compressor, hey, this is a sibilance, hey, this is like a T sound, a S sound, or a SH sound. Uh, because if you don't set this properly, uh, sometimes the deasser stops working or it doesn't compress uh, the amount that you want. Or if you want to push it more, it's going to cut the, the, like the S sound, the T sound, and it sounds kind of muffled. So it's kind of dangerous. Um, that's the first thing you have to do. Just play a little bit and then you lower or raise that frequency up until the point that you feel that, okay, every time that I hear sibilance, that's very pronounced for the compressor. So the thing that I do is this. So, 
So if I lower the frequency a lot, I end up adding a lot of like the throat sound, like the R sound, that kind of thing that's kind of throaty. I add that inside the compressor and that I don't want to do that. I just wanted to isolate more the sibilance, like the S, T, SH, right? So I move it up. But if I go like much higher in the spectrum, I end up not getting those uh, sibilant sounds as clear. So, you know, I just move up and down and eventually I find the, the sweet spot. So I kind of help the compressor to understand. I'm telling to the compressor, to the DSer in this case, hey, pay attention to this. This is the sibilance that I want to uh, remove or tame, right? And then you move, move up and down until you get like to a certain point that you consider kind of kind of good. It gets very clear here, like we hear like it's that kind of sound, so it's more pronounced. So this is a pretty good starting point for this vocal. And one thing that's very important to uh, emphasize is that every single vocal has uh, its own deessing point, depending if it's a male, female, if it has like a deeper tone, like a brighter tone, everything is different. So it's up to you to practice and, and, and try to find those uh, sweet spots according to the vocal tone, okay? So there's no rule for this. Usually uh, for male vocals, it tends to be a little lower in the spectrum. Uh, for some guys, like sometimes it goes down like to 5K, 4K or something like that. Uh, this guy actually sings more like a falsetto kind of vibe, so he has like a, a brighter tone. Um, yeah, for, for this track in particular, like 6.9 was a good starting point, so I could kind of, you know, isolate uh, those sibilant sounds a little more clear. Um, yeah, but it varies a little bit, so that's the first thing you have to do. After you do that, so you just found the what for this um, uh, question, right? Uh, you're going to uh, define how, okay? So first, what is the frequency? And usually I recommend to you, I mean, it's not a rule, but usually for vocals, if you use the, the sidechain high pass, that's very effective because you're going to be telling to the compressor, hey, pay attention from this frequency and on. You also have a mode uh, like a band pass mode. So the band pass uh, utilizes the same frequency that you're picking here, but you're going to be telling to the compressor, hey, just pay attention to the region around 6.9. So if the sibilance actually happens a little above or a little below, probably the deesser is going to be less sensitive to, to the sibilance. And sometimes, like people say, hey, I'm using the deesser, but the deesser is not working properly. I'm going to try a different one. Sometimes it's just a matter of picking the right range. If you're not picking the right range, the deesser is not going to work properly. That's the reason why I prefer to pick uh, the sibilance through a high pass filter on the sidechain because it's so much easier. If you pick the lower portion, the lower border of the sibilant spectrum, everything above is going to be subject to compression. So it's so much easier for the deesser to understand the audio and to compress accordingly. So that's the first thing I do. Second thing, how? You have two ways of compressing, of de-essing a sound. Uh, you can use, and probably you're gonna, uh, you're gonna be seeing this in most of the de -essers. You have what we call split mode and you have the wide mode, okay? What's the difference? Split mode only compresses the region that you're actually using as a sidechain. So in this case, I have like 6.9 and on. So if I, uh, de uh, if I use the deesser under the split mode on this one, the deesser is going to be lowering that region. So only from 6.9 and on uh, is going to be reduced. 
if you have the DSR in the wide mode, what happens is that whenever you have an event happening above 6.9, which is the sibilance uh, range or region, let's put that way, um, that's going to trigger the compressor, but all the spectrum is going to be lowered. Okay, so this is how. So you pick the, the option. You can lower just the sibilant region or you lower the spectrum, um, like the entire spectrum, when a sibilant event happens. What's the, uh, like the sound difference between the two? Usually to my ears, uh, and I use the wide mode most of the time, is just because to my ears, wide mode is a little smoother than split mode. Uh, let me just play this to you so you can compare. Um, so we are under the wide mode now. Let's just hear how it sounds. I am not the one. I only barely got away. But it's far too late for you, for you, you. Okay, let me play on this part again. But it's far too late for you. Okay. We can hear like how soft and how smooth it sounds like too late, like those words. Um, so it sounds very delicate. If we use in split mode, usually to my ears, uh, it sounds a little, it sounds like a little harsher uh, for some reason. Uh, and we have an explanation for that, like a technical explanation for that, because like if that's happening on the, on the higher mids, like 7K or so, and we're simply like just reducing that region, uh, the border between the non-compressed um, uh, spectrum and the compressed spectrum actually just brings the focus of your ears to that part. So you start paying attention to the high mids and that brings like a, a harsh tone to my ears. The difference is very subtle, but I'll show you how it sounds. So now we are under the split mode. Not away. But it's far too late for you, for you, you, you. You think you're changing me. You think you'll stop the bleeding. It single stops. It seems that even though we're compressing like the sibilance, it sounds a little, um, yeah, slightly harsher to my ears. Let me just play this again. But it's far too late. Or it's too late. I can feel like the, the S like kind of, you know, becoming more prominent. But if I play in wide, but it's far too late for you. It's more balanced. You know, it feels kind of warmer. So, okay, that's the second tip. The first tip is what? So what uh, you consider sibilance in your audio. So you pick the frequency. Usually as a high pass um, for the sidechain, usually that works uh, better to my ears. So that's the way I've been using and it's very effective this way. Second thing, how uh, are you using split mode or wide mode? Okay, usually to my ears, uh, it sounds a little more balanced if you use under the wide mode. Uh, in certain situations, you can use under split. Okay, there's no rule for this because it depending, I mean, a lot of things that I'm saying right now, it definitely depends on the way you set everything else up, like the way you're compressing, the way you're limiting, the, the way you're EQing the vocal, or if you're dis distorting the vocal, whatever you're doing to your vocals, that's going to affect how uh, everything kind of interacts with the de -esser. So it's not like a rule. Uh, but if, you, if you're just paying attention to the right technique, that's what the de does. And the third thing they have to do is uh, how much, okay? So it's the amount of uh, reduction and that's controlled by the threshold, okay? So the more you push the threshold down, the more you're going to cue uh, the sibilance, the less, um, the less control you have under the, uh, under the sibilance. So let me just play how it is right now and then we're gonna compare. But it's far too late for you, for you, you, you. So if I push this down. But it's far too late for you, for you, you, you. So if we push it 
a lot down, uh, we're gonna be like making the vocal um, muddy right away. So let me just play in context so we can understand. Let's hear this part. So if we go, if we push it a lot, uh, we're gonna make the vocal muddy. And if you don't find the right um, sweet spot, if you don't reach it, if you have the threshold above it, you're not compressing enough. In certain parts, if you feel like, you know, uh, the S sound, the T sound, like kind of jumping all the time. Uh, and that happens uh, most of the time because like for a vocal like this one, uh, that you want to, you know, just bring it, make it more upfront and stuff. So you're going to be compressing a lot. Um, I'm not going to be talking about this on this video in particular, but I can come back and just talk more about like vocal, you know, side chain. Um, uh, signal flow and stuff like that, but I have like uh, uh, some compression and then I have like some uh, dynamic EQ, which is, you know, like I'm controlling more the dynamics here and then I have like multi-band compression, more dynamics here and then I still, uh, I think I have like a, a parallel compression on top of everything so I'm also compressing. So I have like four layers of dynamic reduction. Because we're doing that, of course, we're killing, you know, like the body of the vocal just to make it more upfront. Um, and of course, you know, like all the siblings, all the, the high frequencies, the high mids and the high frequencies of the vocals are going to come up like crazy. That's the reason why we have to control. Um, so those are the main things they have to you know, pay attention when you're using the de again. What? So you pick the right frequency. Uh, usually as a high pass filter here, it helps a lot just to identify the frequencies more easily. How? You pick the mode, either split or wide. And then how much? Threshold. Boom, that's it. That's the best way and the easiest way of using a de -esser. Uh There are a lot of things to consider here because uh, you're gonna be combining different tools actually helping you, like the de is not doing the work by itself. It's a combination of multiple tools, but just to give you an idea, uh, since I have a, like a C4, like a wave C4 here, uh, just, you know, to shape the vocal tone a little bit, and I'm using the C4 also compressing some high mids and some high frequencies. Uh, the C4 itself is already doing some de okay? So I'm doing a little bit here. For some reason, uh, I used like a, a dynamic EQ on this one. I'm not cutting like the high mids, uh, something like around 2K or something, but it's already removing some harshness of the vocal on the dynamic EQ. So sometimes we have like dynamic EQs also doing uh, a de -esser function. But when you combine the whole thing, you end up controlling the vocals. So if I just play here, you're gonna see like the C4, you know, already compressing some of the high frequencies. We feel like uh, when we have the siblings here, we have already some compression on the C4. So the C4 is actually summing, um, you know, like doing some effort on the, on the siblings control. Uh, and the de is doing a little bit. So it's, it's a combination most, uh, most of the time. And, and this is very important for you to understand because when you come up with a vocal chain like this or any, any you know, regardless of the plugins that you're using, the final sound is not inside the plugin. It's a combination of multiple things, okay? So yeah, I think um, that's what I have for you. You know, we can do more exercises. We can do a couple more things, but please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video, about this format. We're gonna be talking a lot about 
uh, vocal mixing, audio in general, uh, mixing, mastering, you know, just leave a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. If you're still um, not a member of the channel, not a follower, follow me on Instagram at Nando Costa Music. Uh, I'll be back soon with more videos. Okay, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.